You almost done there? No. What did I say about we were no longer about to eat when recording? You think I listened to you? Are you the boss of me? Well, can you chew any louder? I can still hear in this ear. Schwa the roll call. A.G. Tsuburaya, the man who created something from nothing. Godzilla, Ultraman. But when those who don't give his franchises enough credit, these podcasters will do it justice. For they are... Kaiju Sentai! Ultra Ranger! Lover of all things, Ultraman. Ultra Yellow Canister, gone. The other son of Goliath, Ultra Pink Caster, late! Spreading the love on one of Japanese beloved franchises. Kaiju Sentai! Ultra Ranger! Shrek! Greetings, everybody, and welcome to Kaiju Sentai Ultra Ranger, the podcast where we talk about Ultraman's past, present, future, Godzilla, and all kaiju in between. I am your host, Ultra Yellow Caster Gar. And I'm your co-host, Ultra Pink Caster Lame. We're not sponsored by Doritos, but we'd like to be. Well, uh, I think Doritos is a Pepsi product, and Pepsi no longer advertises on YouTube, so... Oh, okay. Yeah. Or at least I think they are. I'm not sure. Don't. I mean, Gar, Gar would want to be sponsored by Doritos because he hates Doritos. I don't like Doritos. I do. They're nice and crunchy and cheesy and delicious. I, I'm Mr. Plain, so if I have chips... I'm, I'm Mr. Lane. Hi. Hi, Mr. Lane. I'm Mr. Gar. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> uh, if I was going to eat any chips, it would be, like, plain chips. Like, like Lay's original. Like Ruffles. Yeah, like Ruffles. <laughs> I can't, I can't eat Lay's because they, like, make me fart super badly. <laughs> so, anyways, we are here to talk about a ton of news. Because, like, in the previous episode uh, that I mentioned, we... I went on vacation for a week. That was fun. And, apparently, there was a ton of news that came out in a span of a week. Like, oh. like there were... Remember how there were weeks where we only had, like, two or three news stories? Yeah. And then there's, like, no news stories at all? Yeah. That's kind of why, like, sometimes I like when we don't do an episode for a while, because then, like, we have the news build up. Mm -hmm. Build it up. Build up the news. Build up. Also, we're on episode 84. Oh, my God. We're getting ever closer to episode 100. Yeah. It's going to be exciting. we got to do something special for that. Oh, we got to do something special for this episode, because I feel like this has got to do something Transformers related because it's episode 84. Okay. I don't know. What's Transformers have to do with Ultraman? I don't know. Uh, they're both giant. I don't know. Everyone's on to this prime go schwa. Schwa. Schwa bubblebee. Schwa bubblebee. All the bots Transformers schwa. Schwa. Alright. Um, yeah, so today we're talking about episode 8 of Ultraman and Ultraman Tiga. And they're both, both very... Interesting episodes. Yeah. Like, especially Tiga. Like, goddamn. We'll get, we'll get to it. But first, we got some news to talk about. It's so odd not talking about what movie I've seen this week. Yeah. Because usually I'm like, oh, I saw this movie or I saw that uh, movie. Before, before we started with this recording, we watched Nostalgia Critics Review of Alien 3. So now, technically, you've seen Alien 3. It's not the same. It was shit. <laughs> Movie. Anyways, news stories. So our first news story is somewhat in somewhat of an odd one. So Ultraman, Ultra Seven, Science Special Search Party, and Ultra Guard Trifold Bluetooth keyboards. All right. So it's keyboards based on like the first two like main Ultraman shows. Okay, I can already see that the Science Patrol one's actually very disappointing because I feel like it should have had like. The, the the tie, oh yeah, it had like like an outline of like the tie of the uniform or something. Yeah, so they're... or at least the symbol, of the science patrol or something. Yeah, so like, like you can clearly tell which ones is which. The the main silver one with the red, like 
clip-on things, whatever they're called. Yeah. That's Ultraman. The one that's reversed where it's mainly red with silver outline, that's Ultra 7. The orange, the plain orange one is the Science Patrol. And the baby blue one, I want to say that's baby blue-ish. Mm-hmm. It's like a light blue. Uh, it's the Ultra Guard from Ultra 7. Mm-hmm. And I kind of agree with you. They could... I think they could have put a bit more like effort. oomph into them. Effort. And like, there's also a, like a holding case for it, which has the Ultraman like title card. Yeah, so I'm like, like they're cool, but uh, I feel like if you didn't, if they didn't have like that stuff on them on the keyboard, you wouldn't have thought it was from Ultraman. Yeah. Uh, the keyboards themselves look all right. Like they have like some. Silhouettes of kaiju's like right. Antlar, Alien Bolt, and Kagon. And there's Ultraman doing his space team toast in. Yeah. Which, on the space bar, it just says Ultraman on it. Which seems a bit odd. Mm. And then you also have an Ultra 7 one. Where instead of kaiju's, it's like different parts of Ultra 7. Like you got his Eye Slugger, his uh, Ultra Eye, I want to call I want to say it's yeah. his transformation is called. Also, I realized that they're, all, they're, in, they're English keywords. They're oh, yeah, keywords. they are. So you could technically use this as a keyboard. They're oh, also, I like that one. They're also in white. Or no, this is for the Science Patrol one. Okay. Where it's all white. So the two uniform ones are all white. And the uh, two Ultraman ones are, are black. Black keyboards. Yeah, so you use this for your tablet. So you touch it to your tablet or something like that, and then you can switch when you type with people. Yeah. Uh, they'll be coming out mid June, uh, with all of them being a retail price of seven thousand nine hundred and eighty yen. Uh, so if you have it on standby, the charge can stay freaking two hundred and eighteen days. Oh, okay, so it's sky blue. Okay. Oh, yeah, this is the sky blue. That's cool. And yeah, it supports like iPads, iPhones. Cool. And it's going to be... Warranty is one year. <laughs> go up, go up, go up. And it's going to, yeah, so it's going to be like $90. So you're probably paying about 100 bucks for this, uh, for these keyboards. Yeah. Eh, still they're neat. It just, I think they should have put a bit more design on the outside of them to make them more look more like they're representative. So. Yeah. Oh, okay. So the, the casing's made of like a leather. Okay, so maybe that may be it. Just because they're made of leather, they can't really design them now. Like, design them with enough detail. Fair enough. If it was like a hard shell plastic, then maybe. Huh. But yeah, I thought this was cool and thought mentioning it. Uh, on to some Godzilla news. Uh, so Shin Godzilla will have a... Uh, will be available on Funimation now. Which is their uh, streaming service. Uh, this other movies joining it will be Dragon Ball Z Battle of the Gods, Dragon Ball Z Resurrection F, and Your Name. Oh yeah, I've, I've heard good things about that. There, we, we, me and Gar at Emmy North, someone did like a panel about comparing why like Your Name is like the best movie ever involving two people who like. Are from two different points in time, yeah. And then you compare it to this movie called The Lake House that starred Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock, <laughs> and it's like, see, this is stupid. Your name is fucking amazing, yeah. Um, but to those who don't know about the plot of Shin Godzilla, when a massive guild monster emerges from the deep and tears through the city, the government scrambles to save its citizens. A ragtime team of volunteers cuts through a web of red tape to uncover the monster's weakness and its mysterious ties to a foreign superpower. But time is not on their side. The greatest catastrophe to ever befall the world is about to evolve right before their very eyes. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. Describe the movie. But yeah, go see Shin Godzilla. It's really good. Go yeah. watch it. Yeah, watch it. You know, you know Shin Godzilla was really good when they extended its two-week limited run. Yeah. Because, like, if you... Like, this is an interesting Godzilla movie, too, because it's literally Godzilla if... It happened, in, like, Godzilla happened in, like, real life. Yeah. Like, that, like if, it, if, it, if it attacked in real life, this is how they would handle it's it. It's the closest thing that we'll have to a what-if-Godzilla-was-real scenario. Yeah. And, it's, and they take it pretty seriously, so it was good. Oh, the monster's weight. Like, 
like the creature's weight's so massive, once it reaches land, it'll just die because it can't support its own weight. And then it evolves. Like spirit. the guy just runs up, whispers in the prime minister's ear, "It what?" <laughs> Stood up. And it's just like you just see it like wobbling around. Uh, but a video that Northcaster showed us, like our friend Cell, he uh, like he showed us this video of like why Shin Godzilla is really good, and I watched it. It was, and the guy had good points. Apparently, Japan really loved this movie because it, like, it kind of focused, like, not really focused on them, but, like, it kind of reminded them of, like, recent events, like, yeah. like the earthquake and the tsunami that happened like, yeah. a few years ago. Oh, it's a really good movie. And just Godzilla's terrifying in it. It's so fucking scary looking. And remember, if that tsunami didn't happen, we wouldn't have gotten Forza. Because remember, Forza was all about keeping the children happy. Yeah. That's why I like it. Apparently Forza was meant to be like a like a really dark series. Yeah. And it was going to have like older writers coming back as well. Cool. I think it was the 40th anniversary. So. Yeah. Uh, uh, Korean so Bandai announces Godzilla King of the Monsters merchandise and 65th anniversary jacket. Yeah, so there are clothes coming out for uh, King of the Monsters Ooh, out in Japan. Look, look at these. So good. Uh, I don't know why we share clothing news on our podcast. Well, it's because they look nice. But yeah, it's like, it's so, it's still oh, a piece Mothra, of... The Mothra one's fucking awesome. Yeah, it's still a piece of art. This is bold lettering. That just looks like it's like it was made in the eighties. And then you have like the traditional, like just, just the random poster Godzilla. Anyways, <laughs> yeah, that's cool. And then the jacket. Yeah, the jacket, which I will scroll down to. Ooh. Uh, that's a sweater with the same logos that the shirts have. Okay. Where's uh, the damn jacket? It's, it's coming. Oh my god. Tote oh, bags. Tote yeah, bags. Because Japan loves their fucking tote bags. Oh, it's... Yeah, I really fucking like the tote bags. Oh, but the model. <laughs> yes, they look cool. <laughs> Where's the fucking jacket? There it, there is. it is. So this is this is the interesting thing, because Gar told me about this one. Yeah, so the liner inside the jacket is made up of Godzilla posters. No, it's every poster. Yeah, every po- or some posters, I want to say. So let's see here. I can. S- God, don't point all of them out. I'm not gonna point all of them out, but I can point some of them out. They're mostly from the Heisei era, because I don't really see any from the Showa era. It's mostly just from the Heisei era, like the not the Heisei era in like the line of films, but like Heisei era as the whole era. Because mm-hmm. you got like Shin Godzilla in there, Tokyo SOS, I see the Destroyer. By Alante. Jacket looks cool. Yeah, it's nice. Look how happy she is wearing that jacket. Ooh. Well, who's this guy? That <laughs> That's cool. So if you're a huge Godzilla fan, you can get it for a nice whopping 35,000 yen. So it's like at least going to be like $450. Nope. <laughs> nope. Uh... Each of these items are scheduled for shipment August 2019, and pre-orders are being accepted until June 28th, June 28th, 2019, at 18 o'clock Japanese Standard Time. Bitch it. Uh, yeah, and the tote bags are $2,700, while the sweaters are 7344 and lastly, the, uh, the shirts. Where are the shirts? Four, fa- yeah. The shirts are going for four thousand three hundred and twenty yen. Yeah. Okay. So that's oh. cool. So remember how we talked about that Act Two, uh-huh. or that sh- project Show Two, or something uh-huh. for SSS Gridman? Uh huh. Yeah, apparently Trigger nor Subaraya have no interest in doing more for SSS Gridman, so we're just getting a stage show. Oh, joy. Yeah. It's actually really disappointing that just they don't fucking care about doing Gridman anymore. Well, it was... <laughs> I know I didn't do well in the at all, really, to begin with, but still, there's a lot of people out there who still love Gridman. I think it's more just the fact that it 
it wasn't meant to be like a giant franchise. It's just, it was a thing that we did. That's it. We're going up. All right, guys. That was a nice project. Let's move on to the next one. Oh, cool. If you've got Superhero Samurai Cyber Squad on DVD. Yeah, all of it's on DVD except for the first volume, which I can't find because it's probably out of print. Okay. Well, anyways, that's cool, I guess. Yeah, so the new stage show that will be coming out in 2020 is currently titled SSSS Gridman Show Zero Two or Show Two. Oh, and there's Alexis in like a suit. Yeah, there's suits for like Alexis. Um, Gridman Grid Knight, I think. No, oh, no that's or, the new original Gridman with the original Gridman. Yeah, original Gridman, new well, Gridman. It, it's Gridman with Gridman. In per- <laughs> anime- is it like spoilers? They're the same person. Yeah. Anime Gridman, OG and true Gridman. Um, got uh, you got Anti. Yep. And Noodle Man. I remember Noodle Man. Noodle Man. He was the one that that Grid Knight first debuted in. Anyways, I will say I'm a bit disappointed. Uh, currently there's no word on cast, but information will be coming in the future. Alright. Oh wait, for 40 bucks you can get a servo figure. Ooh. Alright. Lane, you want to talk about this? Oh. Alright, so we finally got the release info for the Figma of Rika Takarada from SSSS Gridman. So my 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 waifu in in the anime. Look at that. Look at the legs on her. That's amazing. I like the Chiba droid more. No, I like this more. And it comes with her like in her ponytail form. Yeah, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus Christ, that skirt's so fucking short. What? Oh, uh, she has the hot dog. No. You just said. It comes with her ponytail form. She's a human being. Oh, you know what I meant. I'm tired. Fuck off. Anyways, yeah, she comes with like her hair in a ponytail. Look at her, look how cute she is. Whatever. Anyways, so. Uh, there's price, no price there's yet. There's no price yet, but she'll be released sometime in November 2019. I'm probably, like, as much as I do like her, I probably won't get it. Because, eh. What if I got it for you for Christmas? I mean, I'd rather have the Ultraman gun. <laughs> you would rather still have the Ultraman gun? Hell yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's really nice. So, it's good to know that's out there. So, where it's coming. So, as, oh. speaking of animation, so... Netflix finally announced there's going to be a season two of the Ultraman anime. I'm legit surprised there is. Because I didn't think this did too well. Oh no, it did well enough that it got enough. Like, like there's going to be a second season. Hmm. They, they just don't say when. It's, just, it's coming back. When? <laughs> And I'm just reading people's freaking tweets now of it. Uh, freaking people. It's mostly just everyone just saying how they want a common Rider anime. I mean, to be honest, that would be sweet. Oh, what? Uh, com- uh, anime based on the original common Rider? Yeah. Manga? No, well, not even. No, no, no. Just, just a common Rider anime. Because, hmm. uh, like, this came back recently. But, like, some guy, like, when, when Zeo first came out, like, some guy made, like, this, like, animation of just Gates mm-hmm. transforming. And that looked good! And I was like, this is what we need. We need we need an anime of a Kamen Rider, because I think that looks so fucking awesome. But, yeah, no, I, I gotta, I gotta watch this, so. <coughs> Sorry. I started my, uh, second, re- second watch through of it. I'm watching the dub this time. Mm. It's not that bad. It's not as bad as Monotone, the anime. I mean, the SSS Gridman dub. Mm. God. God, that was bad. At least Alexis was cool sounding. Um, yeah. No, that, that's cool. Mm-hmm. 
good for an Ultraman to get in the second season. But that means we're going to get the New York arc. Yes. Mm. Yeah. That means we're also going to get Jack. Oh, and Tara. Yes. All the yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, in more depressing news, so in episode 82 of Old Ranger, we talked about the cast being announced for Ultraman Taiga, and unfortunately, uh, the female lead, Momoka, uh, she actually had to drop down from the role of uh, Parika. That's, that's, uh, that's sad. Yeah, and apparently she's getting replaced. I can see this being a good... Uh, I can only see this being a bad thing. Yeah, because they probably already filmed some stuff with her. Yeah, like, they probably already filmed a few episodes, so it's like, what are they going to do? Are they going to... Like, they don't have time to reshoot. The show comes out in, like, a month. Uh, maybe they'll just keep whatever they made with her, and then they'll just think of some reason why her character changed. Oh, she moved away! Oh, this is an... Or they'll just... They'll redo her... They'll make her character leave, and then a new character comes in. Well, yeah. It's like, um... With season two of Akiba Ranger, the original uh, Akiba Blue, she couldn't come back to the scheduling conflicts. So, she she only had enough time for the first episode to basically leave. So you're like, no, fuck you guys. I hated this. Well, she's like, well, it was, it's been fun. Now I'm off to America. Never to be seen again. So yes, that's a shame. So yeah, now I'm curious to see like what they're gonna do with like her character now that she's being replaced. Um, maybe maybe they'll just make a whole new character, or she'll just mm -hmm. be in the episodes that she's supposed to be in, and then that's it. No, it's like like it's rumored that apparently this this whole conflict may be because of another movie that she's doing, mm -hmm. in which it's a controversial Japanese movie about uh, democracy in China or the Democrats. Hmm. In China, in which some Chinese fans may be, like, it may be hard to, like, watch that movie, hate on her, and then watch Taiga and be like, I can't enjoy this. Uh, I hope that's not why. I hope that's not why either. Uh, but as for her replacement, she will be uh, succeeded by another actress in her agency named uh, Ayuri Yoshi, Yo Yoshinaga. Yoshinaga. Which, she looks fine. She looks cute. Hmm. Then again, all, all Japanese women look cute. Yeah. Or at least all the idol ones. Well, okay, okay, no, no. I'm just digging myself a deeper hole. <laughs> I mean, in the episode where you soldier with, like, the two sisters, or whatever, like that, I was like, ah, that one's not cute. That one's cute. <laughs> do her, do her... I'm um, probably not we'll do her. Uh, I'll probably just get coffee and talk. <laughs> lose the pigtails and we'll talk. <laughs> oh, yeah. Lose the pigtails and we'll talk. Uh. Okay. Yeah, that is depressing. You know what isn't depressing, however? What? Um, More trademarks. So, a bunch of copyright trademarks registered by Subaraya has surfaced, featuring some interesting news about new Evil Ultras, a new form for Taiga, and an ultra hero from Malaysia joining our new hero. First up is a trademark for the name Ultraman Review. If you can remember, Ultraman Review made his appearance in the 25th episode of the 8th season of the Upin and Ipin TV series and became an official member of the Ultra Garrison. So yeah, he's a Malaysian Ultraman. And he's not even... Like, he's not even in a real suit. Well, there is a real suit of him, but all of his appearances outside of that show have, like, he's he's only in animation. But Super Eye still acknowledges him as an actual Ultraman. That's cool. So apparently he's going to show up in Taiga. Oh, I'm glad for that. Get, get some more recognition, buddy. Mm -hmm. You deserve it. Uh... And then, apparently, uh, then we have copyright trademarks for X and Jeed Darkness, a new form, Ultra Taiga, Ultra and Taiga called Taiga Triblade and Ultra Galaxy Fight, a new miniseries, maybe. No other information has been handed out, so let's wait for the official confirmation. So yeah, Jeed Darkness. Apparently we're getting an evil Jeed. Like a proper evil Jeed. Like a, like just, it's just Jeed, but instead of all red, it's just black it's and silver. It's a wild palette. 
Black and silver. That'd be cool. Same with X, X Darkness. That'd be cool. Hello, Darkness, my old friend. Hmm. Oh, that's Wait. cool. The Triblade. It's probably going to be the final form weapon. I wonder why they're doing this now. It's like, well, it's going to make evil forms of Ultraman. Because, like, we need more evil Ultraman. Why not? We got the money. I know, but Belial is the true only Ultraman. Yeah, there's totally haven't been other evil Ultraman before Belial. Oh, but Belial's the true one. No, Belial's just the most popular one. Simply because he's not either a clone or a robot. <laughs> or or a imitation. Oh. Belial is a pure evil <laughs> ranger. <laughs> I just called Belial a ranger. <laughs> a pure evil ranger. <laughs> uh. And Ultra Galaxy Fight. Yeah, that'll probably be a miniseries. Maybe de- maybe it'll involve Ultraman Reboot. Maybe. Or Reboot. Reboot? Reboot. Alright. Alright. <laughs> Next new story involves the DX Ultraman Taiga Complete Toy Set. Ooh, look at it. Oh, look at all the things. Uh, the set is composed of all the contents found in the DX Taiga Spark and the DX Ti- Ultraman Taiga Holder Set. Hmm. So you get the holder, uh, the three keys that are Taiga, Titus, and Fuma, the Taiga Spark, of course, and the Taiga Brace Bracelet. So yeah, so apparently they aren't rings, they're bracelets. Okay. But for us, they'll probably be rings, because they probably won't fit around our wrists. <laughs> there you go. Oh, that's cool. It's, like, I saw I saw an image of it, like, at a toy show. It's bigger than I thought. Like, how bigger? Like, like it fits, like... Mm. Oh, so it's... It fits, like, half over half your forearm. Oh, so it's what the Sazer Blaster should have been. Yeah. Uh, the DX Tiger Spark is Hero Yuki's transformation device, which allows him to transform into three different Ultramen. Uh, the transform Hero Yuki lowers the level of the Tiger Spark and holds the keychain to transform into Taiga. So he kind of like waves it like a wizard ring. Then he's like Taiga, Taiga. Yeah, I hope they yell out Taiga. Uh, Uh, finally, pulling down the lever, the Taiga Spark and Touching Bracelet Ultraman Taiga accessories will activate the finisher. Uh, this item comes with an Ultraman Orblet. Or- orblet. What? Yeah, Orblet. Why are the images not loading? Okay, cool. So it come... Just reloading so, the so page. So it comes with... Okay. Oh, okay. So you can get, like, the big set that just comes with, like, all... Everything and all three of them. Yeah. Okay. I mean, what? Uh, they did that with. I think they did that with Orb. I'm not sure, but they've done it with Jeed and Rube because we both got the big set for Rube, mm-hmm. where it comes with the case holder. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this set will cost seven thousand nine hundred yen. Hmm. So that's like what. That's going to be like $70, probably. Yeah. Uh, the transformation device alone will be 5,500 yen, while the Taiga holder will be 2,400 yen. And they're all set for release for July 6th. So they come out the day the show comes out. Neat. Now, if only I had a job so I could actually afford them. Right. Oh, dear. Okay, so. Uh, we also got our first images for the first accessory set, uh, which includes Ultraman Rosso, uh, Ultraman Rosso Flame, and Ultraman Blue Aqua uh, bracelets, and a Kaiju ring. Uh, okay, so they're bracelets. So it's Ultraman Rosso Let and Ultraman Blue Let. And it comes with a Hellbarrows ring. 
It would make sense for the first accessory set to be the previous season's hero. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, the sets will be for 1,200 yen, and this is set for an early July release. Cool. Probably won't get that set, because, eh. Yeah. I didn't care much for Rosso and Blue. Yeah. And our last news story, which is probably our biggest news story. So, uh, Super Eye has now started making making baby steps towards bringing Ultraman over here to the West again. Now that they have the rights to it internationally. After the whole Thai company thing. And I wish this happened like before Ready Player One came out. Yeah. So we would have gotten Ultraman. Yeah, but there's also rumors saying that Steven Spielberg doesn't like Ultraman. Then it's... Yeah, yeah but you're shitting on the original, though. Yeah. So, uh, there was a licensing expo recently. Uh, the week that we had... The, the week that we had off, there was a licensing expo in which uh, Power Rangers was there, mm -hmm. but there was nothing really mentioned. Because it's like, well, we're still working on Beast Warpers. That's pretty much it. There's no other season yet. But, uh, yeah, Subaraya has teamed up with a company, if I can actually find the damn company name. Um, let's check these. Because I read, read this news story. But, anyways. but uh, this news article goes over, like, the history of, like, of how Ultraman came to Japan, how big of an icon he was over here in the early, in the late 60s, simply for, simply for being, like, there was nothing like him before. Mm -hmm. uh, when first syndicated, Ultraman stood out in its unique character stylization. Um... Uh, we were sitting down, many people just came up to us, saw Ultraman on the board, and would stop and say, I know this character, what are you going to do with this? Uh, it was always fun to see so many people who knew the character and were looking forward to it. Yeah. Oh yeah, if I, if I ran into the people, I'd be like, yo, fucking Ultraman. So I guess the licensing group is just the licensing group. Yep. Okay. What the fuck? Right. What the fuck is a jungle buck knockoff? No. <laughs> Uh, they also talk about how, like, they have ideas for the future being like, oh, we got some new merchandise ideas that we want to do, like, like brand new shirts, um, like, brand new shirts, get some Funko Pops, maybe even make a new movie over here, in which, uh, my idea for, like, if they were going to do, a, like, an Ultraman movie over here, don't make it a remake. Mm-hmm. Because you know how, like, Ultraman has, like, the whole Ultra series has a giant, like, expansive universe. Mm -hmm. Like, with multiverse ideas. Mm -hmm. Why don't you just make your own Ultraman? Yeah. And then, boom, you can add him into, into continuity. That's a good idea. Yeah, so, Ultraman's in good hands. Hope yeah, so I hope they bring it over here. Hopefully some more things come in the future. I only have one complaint. They say the Ultraman TV series in Japan in the early 70s and 80s. It should say late 60s and 70s. Yep. Because they're like... How dare you? How dare you, even though Ultraman ran the syndication during the 80s, I yeah. think. I know the show... The franchise survived off of reruns. Anyways, that's all the news stories for today. Let's get into the episodes. So, episode eight, the lawless monster zone. And the, holy shit, there were like there was like four, four or five kaiju's. Yeah, well, four. Well, four, four, and a four and a and a pigmon. Well, three. Three, then. Because we got, like, the main star of, like, the main monster of the episode is Red King. God, is he, like, fucking, like, his 
ugly. His proportions were so weird. Yeah, like you could hear he had like the sped up Godzilla roar. Uh, we also had the underground monster Magular. Which actually I liked for four legged kaiju. I actually liked them. Yeah. Uh, we got the winged monster Chandra. Yep. Which he was he was alright. We also got Pigmon. Yeah. And for some reason the show considers it a kaiju, even though it doesn't have an actual thing. The plant monster Saffron. <coughs> 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 Saffron or whatever. Yeah, saffron. Which, it's not a real kaiju. It's just a plant. It's a humanoid plant. Or, not a humanoid plant, but it's just... It's like, um... Oh, what's... Like a piranha plant type. Oh, like a, you know, you know, Venus a Venus flytrap. Fly yeah. So, yeah. So, the episode begins with, like, four... Apparently, four scientists are going to this abandoned island of Tatara. And... The observatory is going to be rebuilt. However, they go missing. So, of course, it's up to the science patrol to find them. Unfortunately, this episode's already getting a 0 out of 10 because there's no fucking Jim. Nope. No Jim. Jim is forever gone. Yeah, he went back to Paris. Either that or back to Baraja. Maybe he could be be Ultraman Ultraman France. Ultraman Wii. Ultraman Paris. (laughs) Ultraman Tower. <laughs> the powers of Ultraman Jim become so Ultraman Paris. Ultraman Jim it's can't just, do it alone. It's just him with a beret, like one of those like little thin French mustaches and a cigar or a cigarette. No, oh. no, it's a cigarette, but he oh, has, strong. but he has like one of those things like the Penguin did in the, yeah. in the Adam West Batman series. Strong. Yeah. Strong. <laughs> I just want that. <laughs> French Ultraman. No, yeah, you should make that the thumbnail. Make, okay, we'll make that the thumbnail. The, uh, like a French Ultraman. Yeah. Schwa ha So, yeah. So, like, they decide, like, and, and what's great is we get the whole crew. So, like, Fuji doesn't fucking get left behind for once. Yeah. But, honestly, she doesn't do too much this episode. She kind of just, like, is there. She screams. She gets captured by Saffron. Also, Hoshino is nowhere to be seen in this episode. I think he's gone now. He'll be back. Eh, I don't think so. He'll be back. I think they realize it's just like, oh, having a kid is kind of annoying. I work around his schedule. <laughs> Fuck, what is everyone with Super Ryan having, like, scheduling conflicts? Well, no, that's just a kid's thing. Because mm. apparently, ki- apparently kids have different, um... Kids have different rules than adults do when coming to filming. Yeah. Like, they, like apparently they're only allowed to film from, like, certain times. Oof. So it's like, okay, we need you on set this time. Can't do that. Fuck. Uh, yeah, so then they land on the island. Um, and so, yeah, like, Red King and, uh... Uh... Chandra already. Yeah, Chandra. Fighting, fighting Chandra. Chandra. And, like, and Red, Chandra. King, Red King's, like, fucking kicking his ass... Rips his arm off. Rips his arm off. Red King, what? That was my arm. Yeah, and actually you can see some detail, like, on Chandra or whatever. Like, you can see, like, Red King, like, slashed into him, like, in his stomach. Because you see, like, a hole in his stomach, kind of. Like a a wound. You you bit me there. Well, no, I'm going to bite you. But yeah, just Red King looks ugly. He always did, but, like, his first appearance is fucking awful looking. It's like his mouth is really proportioned. And then, like, he does the Godzilla thing, he, like, throws a rock at Chandra, and I'm just like, fuck you, it's Godzilla's thing. Oh, that's charging. No, and then just, like, it's funny, because so th- twice in the episode, uh, Red King, like, he gets a, he, like, drops a boulder onto his foot, and then he's just like, ah, my foot! And, like, that's all he's doing, he's, like, freaking out about his, about his foot. Uh, and just, like, his movements are weird, like, he's always, like, has his, like, arms, like, his arms so, flail. He's always flailing around. So, like, he was super weird. Um, he was very baggy, at least. I'll always say that. Yeah. But, then again, his his design hasn't really gone through a big change. Like, his and, head look, looks better now. Yeah, his head looks better now. It doesn't look like his eyes are about to pop out of socket. We did get a cool effect, though, with him, though, where, like, we saw, like, they had, like, I guess, like, these, like, glass domes, and then you see, like, these little, like, 
I guess, like, eyes, like, on a stick or something, and you just see them kind of, like, move side to side mm-hmm. in the domes to look like the eyes were moving. So I was like, that's cool. Um, so, yeah, so Ide, Arashi, and Fuji, they all go one separate way, and then uh, Captain, like, Captain and uh, Hayata, they, they go off. So... <laughs> this island may ki- This island may kill people. Hayata, Ide, Arashi, Fuji, go with me. Damn you, old man! <laughs> Yeah, um, so, oh yeah, so then the, we also get introduced to the spider gun, which is pretty much just... Oh no, the spider gun's been around. Oh, I've, I, this is the first time I remember ever seeing it. It's because they heavily, like, focused this episode with the spider gun. Yeah, but it just looks like a fucking, like, expensive hair dryer. Because, like, it has, like, all these different functions on it, apparently. Like, it can, like, produce heat, and then... I'm saying my I'm saying my blaster to stun, to kill. Oh, that's great. I gotta blink him to death. It has a tracking thing where, like, it shoots, like, a balloon on a fucking thing. No, 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 that was the super gun. Oh. So, their sidearm, like, their main blaster, the super gun, has an attachment called the balloon bomb. Where, when you shoot it at something... A balloon pops out. Yeah, and then, like, the, there's a flare attachment where you can send, like, a signal flare. <laughs> Jesus, he's the fastest kid alive. I'll catch him. Um, yeah, so, EA, EA and, uh, or, sorry, High Say and Cap, they get, uh, they run into, um, they run into Magular. Or Magular run into them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so then it causes, like, High to, like, fall off fucking cliff which he should have died honestly Macy didn't but I guess it's because his dummy fucking broke his fall for him instead <laughs> you saw it too yeah of course it, dude it's not that hard to see when it's a dummy and they're not gonna throw an actual human off a fucking cliff um and so yeah so Hayata gets like I don't know he didn't get like broke his leg broken or anything but just like he broke his arm he did break his arm. Yeah, at the end of the episode, it's confirmed that he broke his arm. Uh, but yeah, so then he, like, lost his beta capsule, which then, like, I think both of us were kind of thinking, oh, wouldn't it be, yeah, wouldn't it be funny if, like, Cap, like, became Ultraman, but it's like, no, because what happens is, it's like, Ultraman's inside Hayata, so it just, the beta capsule just gives him the ability to just have release really? Ultraman from his body. But that does beg the question, what would happen if somebody, if someone else pressed that button? I don't think it would work. I think it would just be like, oh, okay, it's broken. Wait. Oh, why does Hyatt have a broken pen? Just whip it. <laughs> Cause a massive fucking planet destruction explosion. God, no! <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, yeah, we got Pigma on this episode. He's fucking horrifying. Eh, he's kind of cute. I, pref- I prefer modern day Pigma. He's, he's doing the hand thing. <laughs> Explain. He's typing away. He's just, uh, but yeah, so like all of them get like captured by Saffron or whatever like that, and then Orochi uses the uh, the spider gun in flame mode to like burn the plants, and then they like see Pigmon, and the Pigmon leads them to the to the one of the the last surviving uh, scientists, the only surviving member. Yeah, Mister Matsu Matsui. Yeah. And he's just like, yeah, we try to do some shit, man. There's monsters on here, so it's something we can do. There were monsters in the Darwinian forest. Okay, I like the joke there. The forest is called Darwinian. Yeah, Darwinism. Darwinism. Um. So then, yeah, so Red King comes back and he sucks fucking shit up. Um, fucking appa- apparently, Haita and uh, Cap, they like, I guess they killed... Magular? Magular, yeah. Yeah. They, yeah, they killed him with uh, these, like... Napalm bombs. Like, napalm bombs. And I was like, oh, okay. That's that's cool to know that they have fucking kaiju destructive capabilities. <laughs> I mean, he was just, like, a rock monster, so, like, he was just made of a mountain. Fire um, in the hole! Uh, so, yeah. Pigmon almost dies. Or I th- I'm pretty sure Pigmon does die. Nope, Pigmon does not die. He comes back. Because, like, I saw him get hit by a bunch of rocks. Because, like, fucking, like, Red King sees him and he's, like, a piece of shit. I saw his parachute. He's okay. It's okay. Uh, and then High, like, High, Cap's, like, trying to get High to, but Cap, he's like, no, 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 go, go save the others. And it's like, oh, okay. And so then, Damn, I can't find my bathe. Cap's 
And then he tries to reach for him, but then he does grab it, and then he's just like, yeah. Curse my short arms. <laughs> yeah, Ultraman. And yeah. then... Like, legit, there's no Ultraman until the 22-minute mark. So there's only... And this like, episode's only run for 25 minutes. Mm-hmm. So there's only three minutes and, like, ten seconds left in the fight. Or, like, enough time for Ultraman to show up kick ass. Yep. I like it, though. He, like, flies in and just, like, fucking kicks Red King. <laughs> Ultra kick. <laughs> and he, like, blasts the rock that, like, Red King is about to throw at him. And then... Oh. Now I wonder what would happen if Ultraman fought, like, a Godzilla type of monster. Right. <laughs> Um, and then, yeah, just defeats him. Yeah, he, he, he kills, he kills Red King, all is well, and they pay, and they, uh, pay have tribute. a moment of silence for the dead scientists. Yeah, and they're just, and it's like... And it's like, oh, why didn't they radio for help? Well, apparently the, like, the geography of the island made Yeah, it, geo, geomagnetism of the island or something prevented them from communicating, because every time they tried to, it would just be, like, a loud static noise, and they couldn't hear each other. I, I the, the, I can't. Uh, uh. I can't. Area. I... Uh, so overall, this was a good episode. It's cool we got introduced to more kaiju's. Um, I like that the team kind of got separated, and this is like kind of what happens when like all of them are just like scattered by themselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cap's a badass. You know, like I was actually thinking about it when watching episode last night for the notes. Cap does a lot more than other captains have recently. Like, think of it, um, in Ginga S, that captain, he did nothing except sit on his ass. Yeah, he never left the fucking building. Hell, freaking, uh, Captain Kamaki did more than... Oh my god, Kamaki was fucking amazing. Kamaki Always. did more. He literally decided, no, fuck going to my daughter's wedding, I need to go and stop this fucking kaiju that's attacking. With... with with Cyber Gomera. With Cyber Gomera. In a boxing pose. It's fucking amazing. Naomi, Naomi did so much. Naomi was the plot. And then you have, um. What's his name from Jeed? Rena? I don't know. Oh, Rena. Oh, yeah. Nah, there wasn't an organization really in Jeed. Well, AIB was the yeah. organization, but it wasn't like a big organization. Yeah, it was just like. <laughs> No, I know. <laughs> Go see MIB International in theaters now. No, I want to see that now. Aliens in black. <laughs> yeah, have- just ha- have it be like an animated series where it's a, it's it's men in black, but it's on another alien world. It's like, oh yeah, Men in Black branched out to aliens, to aliens and now it's aliens in black. Because yeah. like all we ever see is humans as them. It's like, why can't alien like alien come down and help? That's why I liked when Frank and MIB two was just like he had the suit on for a bit because he was like uh, Jay's partner, and he's like, take the fucking suit off. You're not Men in Black. He was like, you got it, my partner. <laughs> um, but yeah. So that was a good episode. Mm-hmm. Pretty good episode. All right, on to Tiga. So, episode eight, Halloween night. So, this episode took place on Halloween. But... I, I noticed I noticed something. I wonder if you noticed the two guard. What? So, you you made a question. You asked a question like, "Oh, I thought you have, Japan doesn't celebrate Halloween." And I'm like, "I'm pretty sure they don't." But they mentioned that this town they went to, they celebrate Halloween specifically. And then uh, I think it was Daigo or someone else made a, made a comment on going, "Huh? Well, if they celebrate Halloween, I wonder how, I wonder if eventually all of Japan will celebrate it, like like we do uh... like we do Christmas." Because, yeah, they celebrate Christmas in Japan, but probably not all of Japan celebrates Halloween, but I, it's safe to assume that some towns celebrate it. Chances are Halloween's more of a Western like Western thing. Uh, it's more of a European thing. Is it? Yeah, it was, it was like based off in Europe. Europe. Mm. I don't know. I know over here in the West and Europe, they get more kick out of it. 
Um, maybe it's because Japan's always being attacked by giant monsters. They don't want people dressing up as monsters. <laughs> Oh, the hell are you costumes would just be too good. <laughs> they would blow everyone away. Well, just anyway, because cosplay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So. It threw, this episode totally threw me off sim- sim- simply for being, like, a Halloween-focused episode. I'm like, I was not expecting this. Mm-hmm. I don't expect Japan to, to have Halloween specials. No. That's why I was, like, sad when Comrade Ghost didn't do one. Yeah, but... that was disappointing. Uh, it's odd when Jew Oger did a Halloween episode. Yeah, so they like find out that there's like something weird going on in like this town that's celebrating Halloween. So it's like okay, well, uh, so they mobilize, and then like the captain's like, no, 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 you guys can't go out looking like that. You gotta like blend in with the town. You're, you'll scare people if you're dressed up as guts members. And it's like okay, oh. so like she orders them to go in costumes. So like they all go in costumes. Fucking Rena. This adorable fucking hot cat costume. Why are you dressed up as Catwoman? The guy told me it was Catman. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, she's like, I don't know. I have, like, a real attraction to Rena now. She's, she's, she's hot. It, I don't find her hot. I find her adorable. Yeah, she's hot. Anyway. Yeah, she's hot. I'm like, oh. I like the short hair. She has a nice face. And later we see her in, like, Almost her underwear, essentially. Like, she's in a tank top and shorts. And I was just like, oh my god. <laughs> and then she also does this thing that's, like, totally gifable, where, like, she has, like, a lollipop, and she just goes, like, she, like, licks this lollipop, and she's just like, mmm. Uh, and I'm just like... <laughs> I, I, I'm just like, god, god, god damn it. Good. Good, 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 good damn it. 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 Uh, but anyway, so, yeah... Uh, so there's this witch that's just giving all the, these lollipops to all these children, but it's like brainwashing them. It, it's almost like a fucking Hocus Pocus thing. I've never seen Hocus Pocus. You should watch it. It's pretty good. I'm going to watch it this year for Halloween. It's got a talking cat. Oh, now you signed me up. Yeah. You know me, I love my cats. Bette Midler's like the main witch. Yeah, it's Bette Midler, Sarah Jessica Parker, and I forgot who the third actor is. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. So yeah, um... Hori's dressed up as Dracula. Shinjo's dressed up as the werewolf. Daigo's like a pumpkin man. But I think it was a dog. I think he was just dressed up as like a dog. It wasn't like a werewolf specifically. It looked like he had like floppy dog ears. Well, everyone else is a universal monster. Yeah, and then Daigo was just this pumpkin. Also, we find... I've always... I've been complaining recently. Being like, how do you pronounce the commander's name? Like, Munakatada? Mm-hmm. And it's like, no. Apparently, Munkata. it's Munkada. Munkata. Because, like, he finally said it, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh. I feel like a fucking idiot. It only took me eight episodes. <laughs> but he's dressed up as Frankenstein's monster. Not Frankenstein. Frankenstein's monster. Yeah, no, monster. fucking, we're, get, we were all lied to as children. Get your facts straight. I mean, for me, for in terms of monsters, I'm more about, uh, I'm more about uh, the werewolf. I like the wolf man. Werewolves are awesome. I'm more in I'm more into Frankenstein's monster simply because when I was a kid I watched this uh Alvin and the Chipmunks movie where they hang out with Frankenstein. Yeah. <laughs> Frankenstein. And they call him Frankie for short. Frankie. Frankie, no. But yeah, uh, like this witch is going around handing out candy to children, but only just for children. And Daigo sees that she has no reflection, hmm? which makes her a ghost. Then she's a go go go. Yeah, like we really don't like. I will say, like we eventually see like her alien form, but then we get like this thing where like she takes off her mask like a little bit, and we see like underneath her her face is like, like the all exact same. I I just kept thinking, Rita, Rita, is that you? <laughs> But no, uh, apparently the witch is a dim- different dimensional monster named Galam- Gilambo? Galambo? Yeah. Oh, you could have made it Pennywise. And I, I'm so be fooled. But yeah, she like she steals energy from children. No, she steals their hopes and dreams. Uh-oh. Because adults destroy hopes and dreams of children. Oh no. 
Not the hopes and dreams of children. No. No. And it's like like every kid that had a lollipop or like candy from her starts uh, starts walking towards like the giant jack o' lantern that goes into the other dimension. And Yasumi, the smart kid, like the, the boy genius of guts, he makes a mention of how uh, how every year on Halloween this magnetic energy is somewhere around the world and children go missing. Oh, so, yeah. So this isn't even the first time she succeeded. Kidnapping children. Uh, so I looked up. Uh, I looked up. Uh, uh, Rita's actor. Yeah. So apparently she she was an alternate next to the movie. Oh, I think she was the mom. Yeah, it's Sukasa Takami. Oh. Yeah. Cool. Oh, I see it. Yeah. I can see it. There you go. Yeah, I thought the mom was hot too. No, it's just not cool. <laughs> it's like moms. Well, at least she came. At least someone came back for Tiga. Also, she was in the Dino movie. Yeah, she was in Ultraman Tiga and Ultraman Dino Warriors of the Star of Light. Ooh. Yeah, Tiga and Dino had a crossover movie. Yeah. And then Gaia had a crossover movie with Dino and Gaia. Gaia! And I think there's. I don't know where it's from, but apparently in Gaia, Gamu sees. Gamu comes to our world and finds out that Ultraman's just a TV show. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. I don't know where that is, but it's probably in the crossover movie. Oh, I want to see that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so then Daigo gets captured because he's a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm starting to notice Daigo's kind of a fucking and idiot. And it's weird, like, they, sh- they bring, like, the witch made, like, a copy of him or something, or just, like, a guy who dressed up in his costume, but then we never see him again after, like, this yeah. a shot of, like, Rena being like, Come on, Daigo, let's go back to the base. And then we just see him stand there and be like... It's like, so what is it? Is it a monster? Is it like, what, what's underneath there? And just later on, it's like, Daigo's not in his room. All we found is a mask. So it's like... So what happened to the thing? What happened to the thing? Yeah, oh. that, would have been, that would have been a nice little extra subplot where it's like, oh, the Guts members are busy fighting whether the fuck infiltrated their base. <laughs> Like, it became, like, a horror movie. It becomes, like, alien. Yeah, like, that, like, this the alien, like, it, it's, it's, like, it's just, like, another, another alien, and they have to fight it, and then, like, Tiga ends up fighting the other thing. So then, like, this, but, yeah. This oh, ch- just make it a shadow creature. So, like, this chick's base or whatever, it was, like, in this house, but then it ended up being, like, a pumpkin head. Just by chance, free the ghost and made them Ultraman. Ultraman. <laughs> Ultraman. <laughs> um, so then, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, so yeah, Daigo finally gets out of the tube. Yeah, 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 it's like, so like, he gets knocked out and put in the tube, and like, the witch is like, oh, I have no, oh, I can steal, uh, dreams from children, but I don't care for adults, so I'm just gonna fucking kill you. (laughs) Yeah, and then, like, Like, somehow later, the door just opens in the tube and he gets out. Yeah, it's like, it's like, what the fuck? Like, why? Like, it, it would have been great if, like, Reina came to save him or something. If it was that easy, then why didn't you do it? It's so easy. Why didn't you do it? Hang on. There's three of you in here, and none of you thought to just open the door. <laughs> uh, and then, so, yeah, yeah, Daigo gets his, uh... Daigo gets his spark lens. Spark lens, and then goes, and turns into Tiga. Tiga time. Pizza time. Um, and he fight he fights the kaiju and which he looks cool. Oh, G- Galambo? Yeah, yeah, he looks awesome. I, I, I like his design. Kind of reminds me of Zeton a little bit. I, what I find hilarious was that uh, like the witch transforms into the kaiju, but before that, she's yelling at the other guts members who are trying to save the kids. Like, oh, don't steal your hopes and dreams. Shinjo comes out with the fucking guts rifle. And it's like, just shoots her down. Yeah, he doesn't give a fuck. Just give zero fucks. Just, pew, pew. you're welcome. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, so Tika fights it, and it's just, like, really silly looking, because they're just like, oh, no, that was, oh, that was the last episode. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and so, like, he fights them. Uh, like, throws him around and stuff, and then he uses, like, he just beats him with this, like, well, he uses, like, a hand attack. He just, like, points his hand out, and he fires a beam. 
And then, like, knocks him down to the ground, and then he finishes him off with the actual, like... Zepalium Tolson! It comes out, like, his forearm instead of his hand. Yeah. Uh, and they feed him, and then it's like, Yay, the children are saved! Hooray! Right, Halloween's been saved! Hooray! Right, it's technically November 1st! Um, uh, and, yeah. It's winter solstice! It's Christmas! And then just ends with them just being like, Yeah, you gotta go back to work, fuck you. <laughs> Pretty much. It's Hori. Like, Hori's just like, oh, we're gonna enjoy this for a day. Uh, yeah, it's like, no, no you, you guys got work to do. Get the fuck out. <laughs> also, pick up some McDonald's. I'm kind of hungry. <laughs> Super size it. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so, Over. overall, this was an interesting episode. I, I was more into it for Reina, so. Yeah, do I need you, to get for that? You know, you know what? I will add that to the thumbnail. There he goes. Yeah, just, just, just her with the, like, just her with the lollipop. Just. There you go. Uh, so yeah. Okay, so I guess that's it for this episode of Ultra Ranger. Yeah, so a good episode of Ultraman, good episode of Tiga. Great news stories. Yep. So, this has been episode 84 of Kaiju Sentai Ultra Ranger. God damn it. Guts damn it. Uh, and next time we'll be talking about Gridman. Yeah, we're talking about two more episodes of Gridman. Baby Dun Dun. Yeah, baby. baby dun, 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 And then eventually we'll get to Godzilla vs. Pilot. We'll get there. Probably not. Maybe. Schwa for now. Schwa for now, mofos. Hey, everyone. Thank you for listening to this episode of Kaiju Sentai Ultra Ranger. We appreciate your dedication to listening. If you have an opinion on the news or shows we talked about, leave a comment down below. Hashtag comments for Lane. If you want to check us out on other social media pages, you can check out our Twitter pages. As always, you can follow me at twitter.com slash You can follow me at twitter.com slash lane double underscore. For other pages, you can find my blog, Gar's Toku Blogs, on facebook.com. And while you're on Facebook, why not give Radio Sentai Cast Ranger a follow? For older episodes of our shows, you can find them at castranger.podbean.com. And we also have some merch, such as t-shirts and bags, available at tpublic.com. That's all for this exciting episode of Kaiju Sentai Ultra Ranger. Until next time, schwa for, for now! now.